on TV as they minister, trying to preach prophecy. That's why they come about with, there's going to be an Antichrist, then there's going to be a false prophet. So there's going to be two men. And of course, they try to calculate as to how this is all to be. But the sad part of it is, this thing that we see here in the latter part of the 13th chapter is not a man. It's a national system. It's a beast. And common sense would tell you, for the last 50 years, the Western world has been affected by the technology of America. I don't say that to brag. I say it to be factual. No other nation has produced a man like Bill Gates. Now just think it over. They had the technology to develop software into what it is. To the point that the government says it's becoming a monopoly. I grant you other nations in their competitive race against the U.S. market. They brought out their inventions and things, but they don't realize somewhere <coughs> within America it causes somebody to come out one step ahead. Now you can look at it in that way. The world owes its technology what was started right here. And they want to call it a false prophet. It's a beast. It's a nation. Through time has sold itself strictly out to the devil. That don't mean that every computer, don't get me wrong. But it's the minds that use these things in the end results. Now as we looked and read this this morning in the book of Revelation. This is why I repeatedly say. Other prophecies throughout the Bible, especially the Old Testament, spoke of this, this man in different types, in different personages that was displayed. But the final picture is in the book of Revelation. Here's where it all culminates. In Daniel's the seventh chapter, is the first that's mentioned of this. It's the eighth verse. Daniel has seen the rising of the Roman Empire. Any man that has studied the histories of the various empires, when they begin to rise into preeminence, will have to agree Rome came into existence and was described by Daniel as a beast that was diverse than the other beast. But within the total prophecies of Daniel, which is in three different chapters, he goes from a horn, he becomes a prince in the ninth chapter, all within the confines of the Roman Empire. Then in the 11th chapter, he's referred to as a king. All of these are titles of the one and the self-same man. That would be in the end time. When we come to the New Testament, the first that's ever mentioned about him is in the 17th chapter of St. John. Where Jesus is now praying just before he's facing the cross. And he says words like this, and none of them are lost, meaning his disciples, save or accept the son of perdition. Now this, in the Old Testament, he was not referred to as the son of perdition. So what does that title imply? Does it mean another man? Not at all. Each one of these titles brings out a certain characteristic. 
that in the end points to one and the self same individual. The word perdition here literally means, and son of perdition means this one ordained to lead something to destruction. So we can say this. When Jesus said, say, except the son of perdition, that the scriptures might be fulfilled. We well, you'd find that in the Psalms. The scriptures in the Psalms prophesied about the one that would be numbered among the disciples, yet would betray the master. So this man, Judas, is a carrot. Because God foreknew his nature. Therefore it was prophesied that in the right appointed time, Satan would enter the man, which the scripture brings out. The man would be overcome, we will say, with jealousy. And he went and sold his master for 30 pieces of silver. Again, to fulfill scriptures. But the point is, what has he done now? He has sold his master to the high authorities for 30 pieces of silver, therefore ordaining this man to be led eventually to destruction. That's the devil's way of trying to get rid of him. But keep in mind, men would say, well, the Antichrist will be Judas raised from the dead. What a carnal interpretation. Just because he was prophesied to be the son of perdition, he fulfilled it in his hour. Satan entered him. He went out and done it. And then to show you, Judas as a carrot was only that in a type. Because the same spirit eventually led him out and he committed suicide. So it led him to destruction also. This title doesn't occur again until we read 2 Thessalonians. And we find it, brothers and sisters, that Paul refers to him. This man of sin. He gives him the title also son of perdition. He refers to this as the mystery of iniquity. That the spirit of Satan, from the very time that the horn was to come into existence, all of these characteristics, these types, as they're mentioned in the scripture, how they will be fulfilled. This mystery of iniquity that Paul could see already rising in his hour, was it a communistic spirit? No. Was it a fascist? No. It was a religious spirit. Coming on so cunningly. Deceptively. So Paul gives him that title. The end results of it means the wicked one or the lawless one. Because he would be full of the devil. It's not until we get into 1 John. This is the man I want us to listen to. First John, the fourth chapter, from the first to the fourth verse. John writes it like this. And he's the same writer that writes the entire book of Revelation, which is an entire prophecy. He writes first John about, we will say, roughly five to six years in advance of the, the writings of Revelation. And he said, Dearly beloved, believe not every spirit. So now what kind of a spirit is John talking about? A communistic spirit? Is he talking about a Nazi spirit? Not at all. It's a religious spirit. Running parallel to the Christ true Christian spirit. It's the devil's way of disguising himself in a spiritual term, in a way to eventually to try to deceive a lot of people. He says, many false prophets have gone out. He says, whereby we know that it's the latter days. And as you heard it said, that an Antichrist shall come. When John said that, he did not mean Hitler, Mussolini, Stalin, he was talking about a religious man of some nature. And he refers to him as the Antichrist. But then when we see in the prophecies of Revelation, 
in the 19th chapter. Here's where the thing comes to its climax. This same man, who actually is the horn of Daniel 7 8, there he is, fully characterized. He's a power to be reckoned with. And it's the devil's power. He's a prince because it means ambassador of peace. And the whole world will be deceived by him. Because he's going to give the world eternal peace. And what did Paul say? When they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction. When John now writes in the book of Revelation in the 19th chapter, now that it is proven that in the short interval of time, we will say, as that man of sin begins to rise and make himself known, as we move toward the week when he will make a covenant with Israel, the world's going to see the climax and by the time, brothers and sisters, the world has lived through this terrible period, the world is going to know he is a false prophet. Oh, but he's the head of the Roman Catholic Church, yes. But let's read the scriptures. The end result is that the ten horns that signs this all because the ten horns is the revived old Roman Empire. And when we come to this darkened hour, what's going to make that Pope of that hour different than the Popes that have preceded him? It's what he sees the two prophets doing in Israel during this period of time. Oh, now he's a Hail Mary. But in that hour, the Pope will not be Hail and Mary. Why do you say that, Brother Jackson? Because God has demonstrated His power across the Mediterranean in the nation of Israel. And them two prophets have put Him to shame. It's time we woke up to the fact they will put Him to shame. I tell there's something else, brothers and sisters that confronts the Pope and he has to look at it and watch it he's adored by the world yes think of the thousands of people that rushed to see him get off of that plane when he come into the Bible lands a cartoon was sent to me it showed this Pope He's an old man. He's all bent over. But he's just walked through a minefield. And the minefield is the Middle East. And here he walks through. Here stands the head of the Muslim church. And the head of Judaism watching him. And they're saying, well, I don't know, how did he do that? You would have thought, brothers and sisters, he would have been asked some questions. But he had already sold his office out to the Islamic, I mean, not to the, yes, to the Islamic cause. He consented to make Jerusalem an international control city. That's to put the UN as supervisor. Put the UN as supervisor and don't let Israel have it as a capital. When the poor political leadership of Israel in that hour would dare to sign a peace covenant with that man, when God just prior to that has showed his miraculous power to open eyes and to cause the world to realize He's shown his mercy and grace by doing such things that causes nations that never even worship the God of Israel to get their eyes open and realize 
There's only one God, and that's Elohim. I have to say, brothers and sisters, when you set the Pope in the Vatican, and for three and one half years, he has had to watch over there and see what them two prophets have done. They brought plagues, they have brought droughts, they have brought the nation of Israel to a stalemate. It's absolutely almost destroyed the whole agricultural potential. Israel is at a break. It's God's way of seeking to show some people in Israel and wake them up. Don't tell me the Pope can sit over there and watch that and still come out that sweet little baby kissing Pope saying, Hail Mary, the mother of God. He's going to be a devil. He's going to be so full of hatred and jealousy because something has showed him up. So he's driven to the office of spirit. This is exactly why that he leaves and goes to the Holy Land. He will literally go to the Holy Land, brothers and sisters, with the international police force of Europe. It's his only way of showing the world, I'll show them who's boss. Naturally, up to the appointed to hour, there's no, nothing is going to be allowed to touch them prophets. But when they've literally prophesied the little 1,203 score days, that God will allow the devil to show himself. And a devil he is. When he comes into Jerusalem, brothers and sisters, his first and foremost motive is, get rid of them two fellows that has shamed me. The fact that he can kill them and they lay in the streets, brothers and sisters, that sends a, a message to the world. Now we've got rid of those that have tormented us with these plagues and things. Once again, the world who mentally are sold out to the devil and his materialistic cause, now they jump up and down with glee and begin to rejoice. And what does the Bible say? They send gifts to one another. That's the Christmas day. And I didn't say it happened on December the 25th either, did I? But they're going to send gifts one and another. Let's jump up and down with glee. For these two prophets that have tormented, brought our world to an end. Now then, he put them to shame. And let me say this tonight, brothers and sisters. All of this about the mark and the name and the number, all the Pope has to do, brothers and sisters, is to use such a device as a club. What a better way to make the world crumble at your feet than to have a cashless, materialistic system that you could take over and then you set in motion the components, put it together. I'm thankful tonight. No world leader yet has divined, I mean designed, to make it, make it applicable in 1999 or in the year 2000. But because we see the component parts of it in existence out here, let us know it's laying right there for the, the biblical appointed hour. in the world that has gone through this and seen that he is allowed to kill the prophets here comes the darkest hour the world has ever faced because you have the devil brothers and sisters that has incarnated and anointed a leader that for some reason has been given the leadership of the world for a little period of time and that's why, brothers and sisters, that mark of the beast, all those other things will be set in force. That's what makes the 144,000 Jewish men leave. And as they go to the nations, 
they having seen the prophets, heard the prophets, know exactly what's getting ready to be brought down on the nations. They're the ones that's going to give the Gentile nations and the people within them Jews of dispersion as well as Gentile people. This is not to bring about salvation to any of them, but it's God's way of bringing a message of our awakening and Him showing mercy to an element of mortal people. Get away from the system. They will have the knowledge and the way to say it that will let mankind then know. I don't have to listen to that thing. I don't have to obey it. And since that time lasts three and a half years, don't ask me what they're going to do to survive. But during World War II, brothers and sisters, there was a lot of Jewish children shipped out of Europe. Their names was changed. That makes me tonight say this. Something's going to take place in America that Bill Clinton and all of our government and I put Republicans and all of them in the same boat. You're a cheap-minded. You've sold your nation out. You've sold your office out. I've never in my life heard the millions and millions of dollars they accumulate to run for an office. What does that tell me? Never have our political leaders sought for such extravagant means to get elected. Because somewhere in the whole structure of the thing, there is a political system that's got to be fed. Our nation has become a nation of lobbyists. When I was a child, even up to a few years back, you heard a very little about the money that any president running for office. Look at it now. But we got people living and sleeping on the streets. These same businessmen, these crooks and so, that will contribute such fabulous sums of money to get that man in office. I have to say, God's not behind the scene anymore. It's the devil. The American society has become duped, hoodwinked, sold down the drain. And this is why, brothers and sisters, the closer we get to the final climax of this whole thing, it's that much more necessary that God himself, not David Crush, or any of his kind, and I say it in this manner, to any FBI secret agent that wants to uh, search us out, I'm not talking like this, because we're planning on doing something. We don't have to. So if you want to sit in the pews and listen to me, help yourself. You can crow now. But the day will come when we will laugh at you. And don't say it's our fault. It's not. We will be rejoicing for we have seen what our God can do. And if it don't come about, do with us what you want to. But you will then before you move. I'm proud of the Christ that I serve. I ain't seen a federal agent yet that I would call and give him any recognition. It's a shame that they're not like the FBI of yesteryears. When Melvin Purvis was the man that designed the capture of John Dillinger, I used to look to him as a hero. I heard later he brought shame upon his character and image. 
or some kind of a dope that he had got infested with. It used to be said that ye man gets his man. But God have mercy. They can chase them all over the world and spend millions of dollars and come home they got the wrong man. What have I been reading in different magazines? The state of Illinois, how many innocent people they kill by running them through their crooked courts. Shame on America and its judicial system. I have to say, our judicial system ought to be changed. You sit on the court's bench as a judge, if you haven't listened to the case carefully, you sentence somebody to death, and you have sentenced an innocent person, then you ought to give your life for his life. The Roman soldier was under absolutely a scrutiny order. order. You guard him with your own life. If you let him escape, you will give your life. That was Roman law. It used to be said our judicial system was a just one. It ain't no more. It's just like our presidents and things wanting to get elected. If there was not the money involved, they wouldn't spend five minutes with it. But that's enough for that. But the time, brothers and sisters of the world, has come through this dark an hour. What a dark hour! Death, <coughs> suffering, heartache. But thank be to God when that day is ended, that last three and a half years of time. Heaven is open. And what they said didn't exist. That every apostate, reprobate, political leader that has tried his best to hoodwink the world, there is no God. Now somewhere they've assembled their unbelieving forces. Let's fight that super being. And saints, the good book that I hold and preach out of says we're going to be in that descent. No, we're not coming with UZZ guns. We're coming with swords. We're coming with a power, brothers and sisters, that can paralyze and magnetize every pop gun there is. And there goes out of his mouth a sharp two-edged sword. It's judgment, yes. condemnation, destruction. Well, what has happened to America? If something don't change America, it's going down the drain with it. This is why, brothers and sisters, I have to say, somewhere this nation has sold out to the devil to be used for the position it's in, the technology it's got. And when it's done that, then God himself is going to clean house. Who he starts with is none of my business and I'm not even going to venture to say. But I will have to say, brothers and sisters, but over in the Middle East, things are getting so dark. And that 144,000 has spread to the, the nations of the world. There's got to be a place on this continent that that woman is allowed to flee. And let me say it like this. They are allowed to flee because they know there they will be protected. And that's why I say tonight, between now and then, Something's going to happen in the affairs of the world at large. If it doesn't, why would that woman want to leave there to come here? Only to face the same disaster. It don't make sense, does it? And it's got to be far enough away from that old Roman system over there in Europe and the Middle East. That technologically they can't even approach it. It's just not a few miles in some godless forsaken wilderness somewhere. It's somewhere on this planet. 
And God knew. He had a way of preparing it. When that hour has come, the Pope, one minute he was the Antichrist, but now he's full of the devil, full of jealousy and hate. He realized that the God of heaven is coming to render, uh, render to him judgment, and he can't help but try to mass the material world that he thought he could use and get by with. But now John, they called him an antichrist. Now he refers to him as the false prophet, the son of perdition. This is the real Judas Iscariot. Not that his name is Judas Iscariot. But everything that Judas Iscariot typified in the fact he led the Savior to the destruction. Here it is all embodied in this man, a pope, a king, a prince. He's a son of perdition. He's well ordained to finally hoodwink the world of unbelieving people and lead it to final destruction. That's to meet the judgment of God. That's the destruction that's going to be measured up to it. So when the Lord descends from heaven and riding on a white horse and his armies with him, what's the first thing he does? He takes the beast. That's the system. You mean Brother Jackson, does he pick up all them armies of the world? No. He takes the spirit of that combined United Nations, the European beast system, and all the kings that are aligned with him. The spirit of it. And the false prophet. And he casts them, brothers and sisters, into the lake of fire. Now he deals with the mass of human flesh on the basis and the authority that's invested in him. He slays them with the sword that proceeds out of his mouth. I can see this earth opening up, volcanoes, ash, smoke. I can see oil wells caught on fire. I can see gas wells exploding. I can see this after of every nation. I mean every nature. Oh, the environmentalists. What a day we're going to have. Because this is the day that God's going to laugh at them. You had no intention to beautify this earth at all. Your intention is to make life miserable for a lot of people. And the dead bodies shall lie from one end of the earth to the other. That's in the area of brothers and sisters where this all is to take place. Yet, out of all of that, there is an element of mortal human flesh going to be spared. I'm thankful. That's why the 144,000 Jews, they have the last message. They do the last picture for a few mortal creatures, both Jew, Gentiles, and such. So the last title that this man is known by, the false prophet, because he has done proved himself. He never brought peace to the world. He deceived the people. So here is he's fulfilling the last personage. He goes out into destruction that has deceived the world and leading the mass to be destroyed at the judgment of coming of Christ. That's why, brothers and sisters, the book of Revelation is the key scriptures to pack to all the prophecies throughout the old Bible. Now I want to read to you tonight. <clears throat> I'm not going to keep you here until the sun comes up. But you and I don't know what's been going on for a number of years. They don't tell you. Researchers develop the bionic chip for human use. San Francisco, researchers say they have found a way to combine human cells with circuitry in a bionic chip that could play a key role in medicine and genetic engineering. All of that sums up in this. A man has a stroke. He's paralyzed. He can't move an arm. 
when they get this all developed the way they think it to be. They can insert a little chip into the muscular structure. And that chip is energized by certain frequencies that it draws. It tells it to move this. It tells us to do that. You've seen this, this bionic man. He's a fiction, isn't he? But it just goes to show, you leave the world alone long enough, and that bunch of scientists out there will come up with some of the most outstanding, astonishing, because they're gods. And they're going to show the world they're gods. They're little miniature gods, inventors. They deny the existing one, but they want to prove that they, they've got the power to do so. Here we're talking about the 666. That's what we've got up there. That's the barcode. That's the, actually the mark. <clears throat> the government is establishing a universal identification number. Our government. An amazing fulfillment of prophecy is presently taking place. The merger of the European community, the Ten Horns, according to Bible students, this incredible political economic development is nothing less than the revival of the once great Roman Empire prophesied in Daniel. The Bible teaches the Antichrist will head up this ten nation, revised Roman Empire. And on January the 1st, 1993, the revised Roman Empire officially began called the United States of Europe. The Wichita Eagle describes its uncanny birth. Since the fall of Rome, there has been the dream of a unified Europe. We are now seeing a brand new Roman Empire reconstructed. The Bible also refers to the revised Roman Empire as Babylon. Babylon begins in Genesis chapter 11 when Nimrod tried to reach heaven and bring in a one world government with the Tower of Babel, which God destroyed. The official poster for the United States of Europe is amazing. Believe it or not, but it actually portrays the United States of Europe as the Tower of Babel, with 12 stars, representing the current 12 nations of the United States of Europe. And if that weren't enough, the 12 stars are not ordinary stars but upside down pentagrams, which is the universal symbol for Satanism. Think of it. Scientists, smart men, will accept any symbol of identity today. They don't give two cents what it represents. Six, six, six. It will happen. How soon? Billy Graham in his book, Storm Warning, page 66, makes this warning. There is something ominous in the air, and I am intrigued by both. The horror and hope of what lies just ahead. And he reminds the people, friends, don't miss the rapture. Revelation 9, 6 describes the horror. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it. And shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. And he asks people, if you're not saved, get saved. The fastest growing movement in the financial world is called the smart card. Smart cards which resemble ordinary credit cards contain tiny computer chips capable of storing data such as bank accounts, 
medical information, and so forth. Already widely used in Japan and Europe, according to Information Week, page 4, the article says, by next year, cards will be used to pay for health care and insurance and in order to receive government benefits and to buy items in vending machines. Newsweek magazine, July the 31st, 1989, page 54, said smart cards may make the old science fiction notion of a cashless society become real. Listen to this. A pilot program is already being tested at a Marine Corps base, Paris Island. That's in the Carolina, I mean in the Carolinas. In the Marine Training Base in South Carolina, according to Newsweek, on payday recruits receive smart cards rather than cash. When, when a Marine makes a purchase on base, he plugs the card into a small terminal and the sum is automatically deducted from his pay. Newsweek. The base is. In fact, it's already here. It's just a small scale. And that's the last test. That's the last step before they take it off of the card and cut it the skin. I've got several things marked here, so give me a chance to see what all I have marked, because I'm not intending to keep you here all night. Here is about the number 666. In this, they have broke it down. They have traced this through the Greek. They've traced it through the Hebrew. They've traced it through the Latin. And they can still come up with the same 666. Does that tell you anything? That's why the devil knew this, brothers and sisters, 2,000 years ago. No. And God has allowed it only to come to the front just here in these last days. I'm not going to turn you to any more of this. You just have to believe me. Piles of it. Man has become smart. He's become too smart. Yes, the computer, what a device, what an instrument. In one way, if you would look at a cashless society, we could say yes in one way. It could be simple. If the devil didn't get into it. As long as they left it ominous. If you want to go that route, you can go that route. But you can see why the devil wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't want to take it. As long as it's on a card, it's not on your forehead, it's not in your hand. Because <clears throat> you can carry it in your pocketbook. But you could lose it. And God help you if you lost it. Boy, I tell you, somebody that got your smart card, they could sure buy a lot of groceries with it, couldn't they? They could even sometimes buy a new car. I mean, it's just that simple. My part tonight in, in bringing it out like this, that makes that old idea that this thing called a mark, or the number, or the name, that is just believing in the Pope and all that he diabolically can claim. It's got to go deeper than that. Because there's going to be people there, brothers and sisters, that God is after to cause them to escape this terrible hour and to preserve them because they're going to pass on over and be people that's going to regenerate and repopulate the earth. This is God's only way. So that's why the 144,000 have to go to the ends of the earth and warn the people, get away from it, don't accept it, don't... And I'll have to say, 
If God thinks enough about those people to send those men who have heard the promise and know exactly verbally what they've said and how to say it, they will have a message, brothers and sisters, that will absolutely awaken an element of people. Yes, I can do it. I can hold out. No matter how terrible it might sound, might sound. And God will see to it that they will hold out. So with that tonight, brothers and sisters, <clears throat> I want to turn you to the 60th chapter of Isaiah. And if men like John Hagee or those men who've got more money to telecast their programs and show it to the world, I want them to know Isaiah 60 is not yet in the millennium. The end results of Isaiah 60 does put everything in the millennium. But it does not start by being in the millennium. The starting of it is, Arise and shine, for thy light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. He's talking to Israel in an hour when he has done something miraculously in the Middle East. Brother Steve Yars, reading out of the same magazine I read out of, tells me, there's an article in that it's called The Fall of Zionism. I made mention of it Thursday night. Now then, they're going to rewrite Israeli history. Just like we've got a bunch of smart educators rewriting our history. It's supposed to come out on TV this September. They're going to expose all of our founding fathers and tell you what a crook they were. What bastards they were. Now, Brother Jackson, you know that's not what they said. But you wait till they start talking in September. I'll tell you, you'll be so disgusting. When you have read what these founding fathers stood for, and for this bunch of low-down stuff to come out and brand them as such, then you should begin to realize why, why is it? Because they don't want America to continue on as America has been. Let's forget God. We're going the new way. Well, so they've got an element in Israel, wanting Israel to go the new way. He says they have absolutely portrayed the, the Six-Day War. Israel is the aggressor. Oh, God. What blasphemy! This is why, brothers and sisters, it looks as though God has folded his hands, doesn't it? He stuck his hands off of the control and the affairs of men. He's letting them do these things. But I have to believe he's got a way of shaking them. Because otherwise, this is not true. But I stand for it. It's true. Whether I live to see it or don't, it's true. Arise and shine. Thy light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Praise the Lord for an hour like that. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. And it is tonight. It's darkness that's created all this stuff. It's not light. And gross darkness of people. Ignorance. No God. Don't talk like that to me. That's darkness on people. And it says in the Gospels, and men love darkness rather than light. Least they come to the light and their evil deeds be reproved. 
Don't come around here with that stuff. But the, glory, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and the glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light. <laughs> I like that. I don't know who's going to be president in that hour. But I'll tell you, brothers and sisters, when that hour comes and God has displayed himself in the Middle East like he has done, there's going to be leaders of Gentile nations. I can't wait to get there. Right now they think it's a mess. That you and I are crazy for talking like this. Yes. And the Gentiles shall come to the light and kings. We don't have kings today. But we have presidents, prime ministers. So I'm going to read it like this. And king, I mean prime ministers and presidents. Will be drawn to thy brightness. Of thy rising. Look what a miracle. Right now it looks like it's futile. She has come home from Lebanon. Right on the TV news just a moment ago, brothers and sisters. I mean the, the cable news over the internet. The Hezbollah that flooded right in behind the Israeli soldiers as they left. Now they have made a breach in the fence and stuck the Hezbollah flag on Israeli soil saying, well, you're next. We're after you. What a world we're living in. Lift up thine eyes round about and see. All they gather themselves together, they come to thee. Thy son shall come from far, and thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side. Another great exodus is just ahead. Then thou shalt see and flow together, and thine heart shall fear and be large because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. This is not talking about salvation. This is talking about materialism. May I say this tonight, and I'm not going to keep you much longer, but when that hour comes for Israel to build that temple, she's not going to have to pass the offering plate. You rest assured. She's not going to have to send emissaries to different governments. Will you donate? Will you help us? An era of the miraculous and the display of God in the Middle East and around the Middle East to show his hand is going to wake it all over this earth. I don't care how much debt there is on the world. God's no more concerned with that debt than nothing in the world. Because the silver and the gold is mine. The cattle of a thousand hills. You brought your own debtness. We treat our political leaders like it ain't nothing. When God wants it for Israel to have brothers and sisters, they're going to come with all kinds of materialism. What do you need? We've got it. It'll be here on the next ship. <laughs> you know, it's going, to, it's going to be a joyful thing. It's hearing all this negative stuff we hear. Boys shooting school teachers, creating that massacre there in that Wendy's restaurant like they did. Don't blame the Christian world for that. They had nothing to do with that. That's the devil yeah. in our society. You let Hollywood turn out these devil displayed movies. That's where they learn it. When you have a young boy, brothers and sisters, who don't know a thing about God, well, he's vulnerable to the devil. Because there is no such thing as a neutrality. You either are, or you aren't. You either go God's way, or you'll go the devil's way. He can use you anytime he wants to. You'll find yourself compelled to do a lot of things you never even thought you would do. 
That's just the way the devil operates. So in that hour, and in this hour, then thou shalt see and flow together, and thy heart shall fear and be loved, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted. Yes, it's on the ship already. We were sent in the one place, but no, we'll send it here now. The forces of the Gentile, it's the material forces, it's the substance, shall come unto thee. To do what? To build, rebuild. Because God wants a temple, and that old wall city, Jerusalem, is going to be rebuilt, getting them ready for the king, the Messiah, to rule and reign in. And it don't belong to the United Nations to supervise for the Antichrist. Now you read the rest here, what it says. Now then, I will say this tonight. In the light of all this technology, yes, this could be set in motion within a couple of years. I said it could. But if the Bible's right, and I know it is, it shows it. God won't allow it to be materialized and become that until we get here. That's why the 144,000 have to warn the world because they know now then that devil will take this cashless thing and force everybody because it's a tool he can use. That's why I say the Pope didn't design it. He didn't have to. Smart, intelligent, financial technicians because they're driven down the road to stay ahead of crooks and we will say counterfeiters and those that steal the smart cards this is the only thing they can do to outsmart the whole bunch of the devils so the devil has created it you might say to travel on down the road into the net into the trap it's just that simple and that's why when that man of sin comes on the scene he is the, he is the king with fierce countenance he's full of hate to the Jew and when he's seen what the prophets have done, this only programs his mind. Just wait till I get a chance. And that's why God's going to give it to him for the last three and a half years. But watch, brothers and sisters. When we come to that tenth verse, having been in the Orient, seen the Oriental people, how they live and such, the masses from India, Burma, Tibet, all through there, the Islam, I mean, not, yes, a lot of them are Islamic, but thousands are Buddha, thousands are Hindus. And they reach plumbing into the Philippine Islands on the Asiatic coast of the Pacific. But just imagine when God shows himself in the Middle East with Israel. What's he doing it for? He's doing it because he wants to waken up an element of people. And that's why there's going to be some presidents and prime ministers. They're going to be shocked. One day they have plans of their government to be doing one thing. But another day when they see the hand of God, and I want to say this tonight, when that thing starts in the Middle East, don't think it's going to be a little war. There are just a few casualties here and a few casualties there. God is the designer of this war. Men with the fastest rapid firing guns can only kill so many so fast. But when God is allowed to get in the scene, I say he will put people to death that was never even shot with a bullet. He will use means that will even absolutely stupefy the human mind. Because the purpose of it is, you have laughed at me, you have educated your youth to disbelieve in me and my existence and my power. Now you force me to show and prove to you I am far superior to you and all your ideas. Then they would say, oh, if God was a God of love, would he do this? He sure would. So 
League of Israel walking around the city of Jericho, the strongest military stronghold of pagans, Canaanites, there was in the land. No, they didn't just pick out a little village. They went against the big metropolitan city with crude weapons, knives, spears, things that they had been capable of making on the way through the wilderness. But when God let that earthquake come and them walls begin to fall, what did he tell them? You take them all. You slay utterly old and young. Oh, but God shouldn't do that. When you take thousands of people, they know they're going to hell anyhow. Naturally, they're going to talk like that. But if you think God's going to listen to them, he's not. And that's why I have to say, Mr. Clinton, you're the one that said it. You're the one that has lined up with the people that make fun of it and blaspheme it. We're not storing guns. We're not making pipe bombs. But we're putting our faith in a God who is the greatest God there is. And when God gets through executing his wrath on this earth through Israel, you're going to find that there are going to be Hindus and Buddhists in the Far East setting in high mountain regions. I think of Tibet. They were Hindus one day. But one night they watched the news all night long. By the time the sun comes up the next morning, a young Hindu man, his mind has done been changed. And I will famish all the gods of the earth of that day, not in the millennium. What's he doing it for? So they can be fulfilled. And the sons of strangers, people that never associated with themselves with Israel in a political relationship. The sons of strangers shall build up thy walls. Think of it. Young men studying some words that belong to another religion, studying electrical, constructive engineering by watching God's display in the Middle East. They're going to know the city from now on. I give my belief, myself, to that God. No wonder the Egyptians will suddenly change. Let me speak Hebrew. you got to keep in mind, brothers and sisters, there's a reason for all these things being written like they are. <clears throat> and I'll have to say, and I'll bring it to a close, God's got this thing planned, and what a glorious day it's going to be. One of these days you'll go to sleep. The day is filled with sadness. More teachers have been shot. More people are making their speeches waiting to get rid of the guns. But when you wake up the next morning, the Middle East is going to be on fire. The minute you turn that TV on, you'll never shut it off. Some won't even eat no breakfast. Turn the coffee pot on. I can't get away from this news. I never saw nothing like this in before in all my life. Look at that. Look at the devastation. Look what they've done. That whole Middle East, brothers and sisters. No, it's not going to last three years and a half. It won't even last three months and a half. Because God's power will literally bear us from Egypt to Plumbing to the Euphrates. He'll sweep it clean of all the ideology, hatred. No wonder them Arabs will come quickly to the Jewish cause because they will be at peace with Israel. Because they're cousins. Here. Cousin, my brother. You can have this. You can have this. That's exactly why Ezekiel 38 reads like that. Thou shalt come down into the land. 
that dwelleth safely. Don't forget the language, dwelleth safely. It's not because Israel has the military capability to drive them back into oblivion. It's because she has finally conquered them and made them to come and be at peace with her. <clears throat> so there's many more things, brothers and sisters, I could say tonight along this line. But I'm thankful to God that one day he opened mine eyes and let me see. He's the God of this book. It's alive today. It's alive to those that will allow it to be alive. And so I hope and pray, brothers and sisters, I haven't said anything through the day that makes anybody scared. No. The smart card is not it. The credit card is not it. The social security number is not it. But they're all stepping stones to the finalization when the devil will take it. Because he lets these devils or counterfeiters and all of that force the financial world into the corner that they have to do that. So that just plays right into the devil's hands and for his man of the hour. Heavenly Father, tonight I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, you have gave us a book. Lord, it's written words, but thanks, thanks to you, Lord, you've allowed us to be able to see pictures that it portrays to our inner being. We know, Lord, we're living in the last days, yet, Lord, we, we cannot set the number of days. You and you alone are the author of it all. God, just help us to be willing to walk with you each day and to put our trust and confidence in you that, Lord, you know exactly what's going on, you know why and how. You bring it all to an end, Lord. May we be found as your children, Lord, walking with you in your perfect will. Bless my brothers and my sisters tonight now. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. <clears throat> now then. Mean a day. Do you have any?